In this video, I'm just going to show you the very, very basics of using the newest Ditherboy version, which is version 4. Obviously, I'm going to cover this update in much more depth in later videos, but I just wanted to make a quick video showing some of the biggest parts of the new update so you know why they're there and know how to use them. So no medicine around. I'm just going to get straight to the point here. I'm already in Ditherboy, obviously. I'm in version 4.0.5, which is right now the newest version. If you ever want to check if you're on the newest version or if you want to update your version, just go to help, click on check for updates and you'll be directed to getting an update if you need one basically. But in order to show you these new features, I'm going to have to load in an image. So I've got this image here of a skull. Uh, we tested quite a lot on this image of a skull because it's a nice image of a skull. I don't think it's a real skull, but anyway. So to start with, just apply any dither to an image. That doesn't work any differently. Just go to the style menu and select one of these effects. All the usual controls work exactly as they did before. There's no change here other than you will notice that there is now a depth slider. Now you can up the depth on a black and white dither, but to get the most out of the depth slider, you're going to have to load in a color palette, which you can do here by selecting a palette category. So I'm going to go with retro and then for palette, I'm going to go for grunge. And you might notice here that we're only getting two colors from this palette preview. And that is because before we see the full palette here, we need to customize the depth of the color shading basically. So it's on two by default, so you always get two colors. If I up it to four, five, seven, eight, 12, 19, you'll see past a certain point, it starts to drop off the, the change because obviously this grunge color palette is only eight colors, which means the correct place to set this depth slider at is eight. We left it in so you can change it all the way up to 32 uh, just because you're going to get some like cool color glitches later on if you do that once you have a better understanding of how this works. So I'm actually going to leave my depth slider at six for this because I'm going to up the contrast which should bring in some more colors and I'm going to up the scale as well here. Now what's unique about this implementation of color into dithering is that this color palette is not being added on after the dither. It's not being added on before the dither the color is directly integrated into the dithering algorithm. So what this means is no matter what dither effects you choose, it doesn't matter which where you click in this menu, color will work and you can manipulate the shading and the relationship between the depth and the scale. You can mess with the contrast, the luminance threshold, blur, highlights and midtones to essentially get to where you want both on the dithering scale and on the in the color palette basically. This is not just a case of adding in color to an app that didn't have color before. This is quite literally to create this update, every single effect in this list has effectively been recreated to support color. It might look exactly the same. So like Floyd Steinberg, if you're familiar with dithering, if you've been using Dither Boy for a little bit, um, you will see that this looks like a Floyd Steinberg dither. There's nothing different about it. But it's been rebuilt to support this exact implementation of color. If you want to skip through the palettes, you can just hover over the palette here and scroll. So if you scroll on your scroll wheel, you will see what each palette looks like with your settings. And we divide the palettes into categories because if you come up to extras here and click on color palettes, you will be able to download. I'm going to put out new color palettes um, probably once a month. Probably more often than once a month, but I'm going to say once a month so that I could probably do a new load of color palettes once a week. But um, if I promise that and then I don't do it one week, then yeah, I just don't want to do that. But point is, I'm now going to be able to make not only more tutorials covering all these new effects, but also you're going to be able to get new downloads to sort of extend the usability of Dither Boy. So for example, this handheld palette is very obviously inspired by the last two tutorials I did, not the last two on the channel, but the last two I did covering like retro handheld devices. And if you're dithering something in green, one of the other new features that we added was themes. So if you click themes and click on 365 Dither Boy, then you can load in the green theme which looks cool if you're dithering something in green. Obviously, this doesn't really add anything to your work, but obviously dithering is a retro effect. And I don't know how old some of you might be watching this, but old software like used to have themes, like old software used to have like skins and stuff. Some of it did anyway. Um, 
And nowadays you just get like dark mode or light mode. You never really get much customization. So we've got like a pink one. If you want to do like some pink dithering, uh, let me find this one probably works better with that. And we also did a new version of the Dither Boy mascot. So if you go to Dither Boy Light or Dither Boy Color, you'll be able to see the Dither Boy mascot here at the top right in full color as well. So some things to bear in mind here. If you load in a very large image into Dither Boy, when you are messing with the depth slider uh, or any of the sliders really, if you've got color enabled, um, you might notice that with color enabled, bigger images slow down the app slightly more than they used to before we added color. And that is just because it's a whole new effect, really. Like it's just because it's an entirely new process that's happening to the image. I know I said this before, but it's not that we're adding color in after or before. It's that we're working in color and having the color follow the rules of the dither that you set up. So this, the result of that, the trade-off for it being slightly slower on really, really big images is that the color is like truly, truly like authentic retro, basically. It's not it's not going to have any point on the image where the color is not matching up with your dither. Whatever dither pattern you set up, whether it's really, really fine like this one, if I zoom in, you'll see there are no points where these colors are not following the rules of the Bayer ordered dither or if we go to modulated diffuse the colors that you select are always going to follow these rules that are set up by the dither basically if that makes sense same kind of thing goes for videos so obviously dithering a video in full color is harder than dithering a video in grayscale obviously particularly longer videos one thing to note as well is while all these features do work exactly the same on mac as they do on windows mac uses quicktime player by default which doesn't have, uh, it's not the best, doesn't support like every video codec. So sometimes if you're dithering, if you're reducing a video down to only four colors, for example, like this palette called Emerald, if you're reducing it down to four colors and there is a slight color error in the video codec that you're using to load a video, then that's going to be very obvious in your dithered video. Doesn't mean that the dithered video is wrong. It just means that the thing that's reading it is reading that one color wrong or differently. Um, video encoding is a whole world, but this does work with videos. Does You can dither a video with color in Dither Boy. Just be aware that it's not like the most simple process so you might see different results depending on the software that you use to watch the dithered video and then the only other thing here is if you are dithering images which is primarily what the color thing is for is for images i would just recommend coming up to help and turning on lossless export if you are sending these images to print you probably don't need lossless export if you're just posting them online but if you are sending any of these images to print, then I would recommend using the lossless export mode. So that basically covers the basics or hopefully enough to just kind of get you going. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna have to try and like make an effort to stop here because I, this new update is so fun in my opinion to use that I could just sit here and talk all day about it. So yeah, I just wanted to get a video out that just gets you up to speed on what's new and just the basics about it, just so that when I move into making the more complex tutorials, you know what's where and you know what's new. But yeah, if you're watching this and you're still on version three, just make sure you go to help and click on check for updates. This button for check for updates is in version three. It's not only in version four. So don't worry, you can still do this and get updated. But if you have any issues, you can of course send me an email, just include your order number because that helps me know who you are. Um, if you want to share some of your work in extras we've got a discord server and someone was very generous or kind enough to make a dither boy subreddit now it's not like an official subreddit so if you post there asking for help i'm not going to see that i don't really use reddit but i will leave a link to that as well for if, if any of you are like regular reddit users i guess you can push our work there as well but yeah more specific tutorials incoming I'll be putting new resources out for Dither Boy in the color palettes section here in the extras menu. So go get those. And until I get the next tutorial out, let me know what you want to see. If there's any specific effects, if I've posted any work with this new update that you would like to see, then just let me know and I'll make a tutorial for it. But pretty much everything you see me do is loading in an image, choosing whatever effect I want to do. So checkers I'll go for. 
setting up the dither as usual. So moving around the threshold, moving around the contrast, up in the depth, and then I'm not going to change the color palette because that looks really good. Once you learn this update, kind of what you see is what you get. Like you'll be able to work out what I've done. If I've posted some work, you'll be able to work that out pretty easily just with those basic steps really but i'm still going to do tutorials anyway as i said because this update is a lot of fun to use i could just sit here and waffle on about it for ages so i'm going to shut up now thank you for watching and i will see you in the next video